You obviously know Kung Fu. Joining me today on the Kung Fu Driving Podcast, award-winning director, stunt coordinator, performer, uh, whose work you've seen on CBS's Tracker, and uh, most recently, uh, tearing up the charts, the FX epic saga Shogun, Lauro David Chartran Del Valle. Lauro, thank you so much for joining the show. Thanks for having me. It's great to have you. I, I have so many things to uh, to ask you about, but um, congratulations on the success of Shogun. Uh, what an accomplishment. Have you felt the love from the fans on, on what you put together here? Oh, my God, yes. I've been uh, answering a few questions on uh, on YouTube and here and there on Instagram and stuff. And, uh, yeah, lots of love for this one. It's uh, it's quite an amazing project. It was, it was a dream job, I got to tell you. Oh, speaking of that, uh, when you were first approached for this, given that the cast was going to be, you know, mostly Japanese and the amazing hero Sonata was going to be producing and, and uh, you know, kind of hands on with the whole thing. Um, did you salivate at the opportunity to work on this or or was it one of those things where you're like, you know, are you guys sure you want to you want me to work on this? No, most definitely. I, I jumped at the chance immediately and it was all because of hero Sonata. Uh, we had worked together on The Last Samurai 20 years prior, and he remembered me. We stayed in touch, but he he told the producers to contact me and that uh, I was the man for the job. So I was super appreciative of that. And um, yeah, it was it was just amazing experience, amazing project, 14 months. And um, it, it was just a blast to do, you know, and he was such a big help. He, you know, he brought the authenticity to it along with so many other people, but um, he was closely involved with everything that we did and it was a real honor to work with him again yeah now uh i want to get to that authenticity in a bit but what is it about your style and your work you think that uh, made you the right guy to take on this epic i focus on reality so i've never been much for the superhero programs and stuff like that um you know my kids love them i love them too but um i i base a lot of my action a lot of my stunts um and my storytelling in based in reality so that was something that they really needed for this and and hero knew that and remembered that with with the, the last samurai and how we constructed the fights there and, and did all the action so he just uh knew that it would transition over i mean this was even more intensely authentic than the last samurai for sure and so there was even some things that i constructed where they said no even even more uh uh, realistic and, and quicker, shorter, faster, more brutal. Every de- every blow was a death blow. You know, you were trying to yeah. kill somebody. And you made a move. Yeah. Oh, well, let's get into that a little bit because the authenticity of Shogun uh, is really what uh, a lot of people point to as the uh, defining characteristic about this whole epic. Uh, people just love that it feels so real, and it it, uh, it uh, doesn't. Um, it doesn't dress anything up with anything that, that does need to be there. Right. Um, the, the, the katanas are one cut, one kill. And it's, it's that sharp and that brutal and, and that direct. Um, how did you approach the whole research and design for all of the fighting that goes on uh, in this, uh, in this whole saga? Well, I got to say that I, I took a lot out of my, my book and my studies from doing the last samurai and then we had so many great um, technical advisors on the show that uh, that helped me out as well. And I also brought two of the main stuntmen that I used on The Last Samurai. I, I brought them over from Japan, so they were part of my team. Uh, Hiro Sonata's double, whose name is Hiro Manami, uh, used to be from Jan- Japan. He lives in Los Angeles now. He came up. And those three guys were my main fight choreographers. So I would I would bring out the, the lay of the fight and the story and how we were going to connect it and make it you know, such a through line story with the fight or whatever the action was. And then we would go about constructing it from there and, and I would oversee it and tweak it and, and tighten it up and make things just brutal. I, one of the biggest things I said to all the guys is there is no bullshit on this show. And by that, I meant there's there's so much filler that goes into fight scenes now to just make them extended and longer and stuff like that. And, and it's we didn't want any filler. We didn't we didn't want anything like that. So no clacking of the swords above the head. It was everything was cut for the neck, you know, go for the target, nothing just peripheral. Yeah. Uh, now, that kind of thing, though, um, in a an era where Flash is, uh, you know, is, is some of the stuff that people want to see, um, what kind of training had to go into everybody that had to, you know, uh, wield a katana or a naginata? Uh, what kind of boot camp did you have in place to to get everybody 
up to speed on how to do it correctly to honor the legacy of of that weapon and and the authenticity of the of the time period uh instead of you know wanting to spin it around over their head and, and do lightsaber moves and things like that no and a lot of a lot of the performers that i hired came with that kind of mindset because they've been working on the superhero shows and the cw shows and stuff which are great and everybody loves them and they're very um entertaining but this this was all about story. It was drama, story driven, and so the like I kept saying, the, the moves had to be authentic. So we did have a boot camp. We had a six week boot camp where I brought all the stunt people that were going to be performing on the show, and all the extras and even the actors. They came in and we drilled them for eight hours a day on katana and um, and uh, kyodo kyodo, kyodo uh, archery, uh, spears, yari, and also movement, just movement in, in military movement and marching. So they weren't, at that time, they weren't strictly step-by-step step in line, but they did have a, a formation and, and it was usually very narrow to get through the mountain passes and things like that. So yeah, we, we went over it and I brought my sensei uh, Fumio Demura up from Los Angeles and he oversaw the training and it was it was great to have him there. And he just made sure everybody was on point and, and uh, myself and the rest of the trainers went around and corrected everybody and kept them tight. And, and that followed through throughout the show. So it was great. It was, it was a perfect thing to do. Uh, much respect to uh, Fima Demura, who uh, sadly has passed, but uh, the real Mr. Miyagi there. Um, I'm sure he had some, uh, um, some excellent insights for you. What um, the uh, Hiro Manami too, um, uh, well known uh, in the industry. Uh, I think he was a, a, a power ranger for a while, right? <laughs> Yes, he was actually. We wanted to use him on the Last Samurai, but he was doing Power Rangers at the time. We couldn't get him off of there. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, with the with the cast that you had, uh, who among the cast uh, was the most game to to try to do as much of their own sword work and, and stunts as they could? You know, within within the safety guidelines that you have to have in place. Well, you know, they all were, but Cosmo Jarvis was the craziest because. Uh, he- <laughs> He'd be, he'd be blocking out a scene and he'd say, but I could do this. And he'd throw himself over a railing and onto the floor and cut himself. And I'm like, oh, just let us block it out. We'll figure it out. We'll put a pad here. We'll, we'll put some pads on your elbow, whatever we got to do. But he would just, he was just so gung-ho. He just wanted to do everything and jump into it. And he loved his, his stunt double, uh, James, but he just, uh, he, he wanted to do it all himself, you know, when it came down to it. And he did, he did so much of it. Now, Anna was well-trained before she came to us and she was super gung-ho uh, to do everything as well um she had a great stunt double darlene but um she most of most of the time had to sit on the sidelines so we would you know we would work out all the choreography with the doubles and get it all dialed in show them and then train them in, in the choreography of it and then they just took it from there you know and of course you know sonata son what can you say the guy's you know been a pro and and just you know, he, he did everything and, and he was amazing. So, and he coached everybody as well. So he was, he was a great mentor for everybody. Uh, speaking of, of coaching, you have an extensive background in martial arts yourself. Um, how influential was that background in, in setting your path uh, into stunts and the film industry and, and, you know, eventually here to Shogun? Huge. That's, that's everything that got me into the business. You know, Sensei Demra was a stunt man as well. And he led me, you know, once he knew that that's what I wanted and that was my goal, he pointed me in the right direction. And then, you know, everything that we trained in in martial arts, we also um, related to film and TV because he loved that so much as well. So it was it was a double connection that we had in that way. And and all my training, weapons training, Okinawan weapons, katana, um, you know, and then I, I branched off into other martial arts because that was strictly Japanese, Shitoru and Shotokan. But I branched out into Taekwondo and Jiu Jitsu. And, and he also taught Judo in the dojo and also Aikido. So I got a very, very well rounded education as far as martial arts go. And it's, it's been nothing but a, a blessing for me in this business. Are you still training? Not so much in the dojo, but I mean, I do so much every day and, and every week, you know, on the set of every show that I work on. So it's, it's just constant, always choreographing fights, always. You know, I'm always demonstrating, always showing it and, and doing it. So, yeah, I, just, I still I still bust the move every now and then. <laughs> One of the things that uh, we appreciate on the show uh, is, um, you know, the uh, the faithful uh, depiction of martial arts uh, in entertainment. Um, and we appreciate it when uh, when the actors and the stunt uh, people look like they know what they're doing and they're not relying on heavy editing uh, to to kind of keep the uh, the action moving, because, uh, you know, we can tell when it looks like 
garbage. So uh, what was um, important to you about making sure that all of the movement in Shogun was um, authentic to the uh, to the story that you wanted to tell? It was rehearsal, 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 and and just fine tuning and cleaning up any any sloppiness, anything. It just had we just kept it tight, 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 and that was the the main key. And and yeah, and that's that's the whole thing that I was super proud of. You know, going back and mentioning the last samurai again, that was the first thing that I was ever proud of. That I I went to Sensei Demura and all my other students and went, look, you know, this is this is something to be proud of. And then Shogun was even more so for me. I, you know, we we just took it to another level with Shogun, so it was. It was great. And, you know, you work in so many projects and you love what you do. My, my life has been just a joy doing stunts and, and movies for 35 years now. And I'm just living the dream. And, and to have a project like that is it's just crazy. It's just beyond a dream. You know, how different is the mindset uh, for uh, creating the action for something like Shogun uh, as opposed to uh the stuff that you do for tracker uh you know different worlds different scenarios different situations um but your your approach has to have some kind of um structure because that's who you are and that's how you do it so what, what, how different though is it to to uh to shift that mindset well of course in shogun we're in 1600 and we're and we're using traditional weaponry and and things like that tracker is now and they didn't want him to be overly trained you know he's he's a survivalist and he has learned some things along the way but he's not he doesn't have a style. He's not super trained, but they wanted to base it in reality and brutality. So we keep all the fights short, usually four to three to four moves and he's in and out. You know what I mean? He either knocks the guy down and gets away or he subdues them and chokes them out or ties them up, whatever he ends up doing. But um, again, very reality based. They don't want a lot of extra movement, a lot of fancy stuff. It's just to the point, which is what I love to do. So this has been a great series for me as well. Yeah, it's definitely only in the uh, over-exaggerated movies where fights are like 10 minutes long, right? <laughs> that's that's very entertaining for a lot of people, and that's great. You know, it just depends on the story you're trying to tell, right? And, um, you know, these these stories are based in, in reality or, you know, the production wants them to be, and, and that's where the directors are going and the producers. And so I, uh, I do my best to keep it that way with them and collaborate. Speaking of that collaboration, um, Shogun uh, had so much emotion, so much... Uh, invested in the characters uh, to, to tell that story. How closely were you working with, with, with the directors and the storytellers to make sure that all of that action complemented uh, what they were trying to portray with, you know, their, their faces and their, their movement um, because action for action's sake just takes people out of, you know, the situation. So how do you, how do you get it right? We started very early on in the process from conceptualizing the scripts and the action that was that was driving the drama at the time. You know, you want action, like you said, just for the sake of action is is it's boring really quick. So it has to have a through line with the story. And and a lot of times that becomes very intense for the viewer and, and they feel the nervousness of that character. So that's what we're, we're always trying to portray, the the danger you know, in the drama that was going on through the action. And so it started, you know, early on in the script stage. And, you know, I would actually have meetings with the producers and the showrunner before the director was even on board and sometimes even start storyboarding things. And then the director would come in and, and tweak things and we would collaborate that way and, and fine tune it. Then I would go to town with my rehearsals and my previs and I would film it all as, as the storyboards depicted that we worked out together. And, you know, and then we would bring our cast in and then I would previs again with the cast as well and put all those moments in so that the director would just be able to know on the day that it was just going to go because you know we had a 15 day schedule so we had to move along really quickly you know and yeah. it's a lot of work to make it that that show was so epic you know uh, with the costumes and the amount of people that we had and and the filming techniques that we used you know so it was uh it had to be a major collaboration of all the departments and on point you know so yeah. that was that was what i was proud of just the you know, the camaraderie that we had and the teamwork that we had and uh, everybody was on the same page and, and which was tough because we were, you know, dealing with two different languages and oh, yeah. so, many, so many of the people that came over from Japan, you know, we, we had to really find a groove to, to work together and, and get it right. You know, now, uh, I, the stunt coordinators, the uh, action directors that, uh, that I've talked to on the show, a lot of them, uh, sometimes, um, lament having to turn their stuff over to an editor that maybe doesn't get 
uh, the vision. Um, how closely did you work with your editors to make sure that from storyboard to screen, uh, you guys got everything that you needed to get there? In this particular project, I didn't get to work with the editors at all. Um, so that's that's always a, a point that I, I try to talk to with the producers and the directors. And I love to get my my hands in there and just just make sure that they know the through line of the fight and the, the order of everything and, and stuff like that. But they're so good now. And they they actually passed on my previses. We kept them on on the oh, pics good, yeah. and they were able to view the previses and, and know, you know, from A to Z how, you know, it was meant to be. So they nailed it. They nailed it. And that was that was great. You know, I just I don't have time because we're so we're always jumping ahead to another episode and working on this previous one. And and so there's no time for me to get into the editing room with the, with the editors. I don't have that luxury. Yeah. Now, for people who don't know what previews are, a previews is late visualization where they, they block out the entire scene and uh, and try to get uh, the, uh, the the action and the and the camera work all in, in sync so that when it comes to uh, filming, um, it's all there and it's uh, they can hopefully get it all correct. Right. Um, it's interesting because every director is different and everyone has their own style and, and how they work. And sometimes when I'm doing a previs, they want me to edit everything, you know, myself and, and, you know, put the fight together or the action together from A to Z. And they closely emulate that or may change up a few shots, you know, and some don't want you to do that at all because yeah. they don't want to get in their mind some direction that you're going with it. They, they just want to see big masters of it and then they can, edit it and cut it up and get in for tight shots where they feel it's best for the story and stuff like that. So I'm very, you know, adapt it going either way. And, and I don't mind. It's not, it's, you know, whatever they want to, whatever way they want to work, I'm happy to, to make it happen for them. Well, uh, I think you have an advantage because you are a filmmaker uh, yourself. Right. Uh, and um, the current state of, of Hollywood today, a, a lot of the biggest blockbusters are done by guys who were just stunt guys uh, before. Right. And now they're making uh, some of the big, uh, summer blockbusters that uh, that are, are that resonate with the audience now. Um, what is your state on? Uh, what is your take on the state of stunt professionals uh, and uh, what they're doing in Hollywood now? Well, every every stunt person is different, you know, and everybody has different goals in their life. And you know, when I first started, when I was eight years old, I wanted I decided I wanted to be a stunt man, and that's all I focused on. I never I never ever thought about being becoming a director or or anything like that, but. I, I just fell in love with the whole process so much. I became a sponge and I just wanted to learn everything I could on set. And uh, that, that included writing scripts and, and directing and producing and everything. It's just such a fascinating world that, you know, you can create from just an idea in your head. So that's my path, but I know a lot of stunt guys just want to be stunt guys and they just go until they can't go anymore. And some don't even want to become stunt coordinators, you know, but, that's what hooked me first was the, was going from being a stunt person to a stunt coordinator because I always think, yeah, but what if we did it this way? We could do it this way. Or can I try this, you know, when I was a performer? And I would always be respectful and just take the coordinator off to the side. And, you know, I wouldn't wouldn't try to make it my idea, but, you know, I, I can do it in one take. I don't need to do it this way. You know, I had the confidence to, to do things like that. So that ramped me into stunt coordinating. And then from stunt coordinating, when you're working closer with the directors and the producers, then but what if we shot it like this and the action's coming right at camera here and we can do it safely and just miss the camera and, and do things like that. And they're like, okay, well, why don't you set up the shot? Then, you know, you, I'm going to send you out and you can do some second unit. And then it starts nice. to feel like, yeah. No, if good work begets more work. And, you know, if you, if you do a decent job, then they, they ask you back or they, somebody else likes your work and wants you to come help them. So like I said, it's, it's, it's teamwork that nobody does it on their own. So if we work together, we make yeah. a good product. So what about you and your personal uh, uh, evolution as a, as a creator? Uh, I know you have uh, something uh, in the works, Protectors of the Land. Yes. Talk to yes. me a little bit about that. Well, it was something I wrote about three years ago. And um, then I, I, you know, I was able to secure the money for it. Um, so we went out and shot. I asked for a leave of absence from Tracker uh, because it was the only time that my lead actor, Tim Razone, was available. And they were very supportive and they said, go do it, man, go make your movie. And, and so uh, I had, you know, three weeks of prep and then three weeks of shoot and 14 days was a tough one to cram a feature film into, but, uh, <laughs> but it was on board and um, yeah, it was, it was great. It's, you know, it's a, the cartel are, are moving drugs into Alaska and they start crossing indigenous land, decimating some of the communities and they, and, and in the storyline, they, they kill a woman kind of by accident, but uh 
the community takes revenge on them and, and summons the spirits of their elders and become shapeshifters and take out the cartel. So we had a lot of fun with that. And I had an amazing costume designer who, who made some really beautiful costumes. It took about a year, actually. And um, and then I got some great actors. I got Graham Greene on there. And he just gave yeah. me a performance lifetime it just he just blew me away so i was really really fortunate and uh, super excited so we're just in post on that now starting to edit and get the music and the, and the color timing and the visual effects and all that good stuff and you had 14 days so you said to shoot this 14 days it was pedal to the metal every day just uh, going 100 <laughs> you know the camera guys never took their camera off their shoulder they were, they were running and gunning yeah it was great 14 days and you wanted to throw shapeshifters in there you're uh, ambitious <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I heard that many times every day. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so what else do you have uh, in the works? Is there anything that you can talk about that you're working on? Uh, anything that you don't want to talk about, but maybe hint at? I can't really talk about. Uh, I'm, I'm just in, in negotiations right now on about three different shows and trying to decide what direction I want to go, you know, uh, because I, I, I'm so spoiled. I, I've never had to, since I started directing, I've never really chased directing. It's 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 very... I love doing coordination stunts, everything. So, you know, I've got a great career in that. So if, if I don't find something that I really want to direct, then I can, I can coordinate and second unit direct. And, and I just, I love it all. So it's, it's never, it's a hard choice. Sometimes it's because I want to travel. Sometimes it's because I want to work with a certain person. And right now I just read three scripts, three different projects, and they all blew me away. Like they're just phenomenal. And I can't say anything about them, but, you know, I got to the end of the, the script and I was just like, wow, I want to do this but I can't do it all, you know, sort of thing. Cool. So you got you to make your choices and it's not always easy. So, well, you've made some good choices to date. So kudos to you on that. <laughs> uh, I'm blessed. They come to me and, and I, you know, I'm lucky. I really am. Uh, that's awesome. Well, you know, um, the skill uh, that you, you have uh, brings you the luck. So, you know, you are, you've earned it, I'm sure. But um, tell the audience where they can find uh, you online, uh, Detectives of the Land uh, and uh, anything else that you have in the works so that we can continue to follow you. Well, I, I'm really an Instagram guy. That's about the only thing I, I do. I, I've got a Facebook thing and I just kind of funnel stuff onto there. But Protectors of the Land underscore movie is uh, my Instagram handle for that. And then uh, Bullseye Stunts Inc. Bullseye underscore uh, Inc. Um, you can find me on Instagram there. And I've also got Dubai Films Inc., which is my directing page. So those are kind of my three main pages and uh, they all overlap and spill onto each other. And, you know, certain things I direct, I put over on this one and stunts is this one. And then protectors, the movie is over on that one. So but they all, they're all interconnected. Awesome. Uh, if, if you had uh, an unlimited budget and uh, you could do any project that you wanted to, is there a, a, a dream project that you think that you'd want to uh, bring to the screen? I have one that I'm working on. I have been for probably seven years now that I'm trying to get together. It's a, a really funny action comedy and it's a lot of fun and it's a, it's kind of a, a road trip uh from from vegas to mexico uh and this this hitman who he's part of the italian mob but he's not italian so the italians want to kill him too <laughs> and then the yakuza are after him and then the mexican mob is after him and it all culminates in in a big showdown in mexico uh somewhat like desperado and um it's just it's just a lot of fun and really really funny and so i'm just trying to finalize the financing for that and then and get some some great comedic actors on board and, and uh you know i I've, I've got some actors that i've worked with that uh, we've spoken about earlier i'm not going to say too much about it but i'm trying to <laughs> on board as well so yeah and that's going to be a 14 day shoot too right <laughs> no that's called mexican radio and it will probably be closer nice. to a 50 to 60 day shoot it's a, it's a bigger budget thing and and but just a ton of fun and a ton of laughs Excellent. and big, crazy action. So yeah, fingers crossed on that. one. Very cool. Best of luck then on Mexican radio. Uh, best of luck with protectors of the land. Looking forward to, to seeing that. Congratulations again on the success of tracker and of Shogun, which again is, is all over social media. People love uh, what you guys have put together. So congratulations on that. And uh, best of luck. We'll keep track on, uh, on what you're doing and uh, hope to see much more of your work sooner rather than later. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Poison clan rocks the world.